I'm back. It's kind of a wet and uh, rainy day, but got a little break in the weather and BattleBox just arrived. So, what a perfect opportunity to get outside and see what we've got. I, you know, a lot of people have warned me um, that I'm not going to like what's in this box. Uh, you know, I try to avoid as many spoilers as I can, so when I do the unboxings, it's like genuine response to stuff, but I've heard bad things. A little rip in that tape over there already. Um, but I'll see what we've got. Forgot what mission we're up to. We'll find out in a minute, I guess. It's a big box, at least, right? Mission 54. Wow. I forgot what mission I started on, but it's been quite a few missions, so not, not a lot in the box. Wow. One, two, three, four, five, six total items. This month is packed with many useful and essential items. Six. Well, you know, they might be really good items. I don't know. I remember when BattleBox used to have, like, a whole lot of stuff in it. Um, let's get rid of this. There's 10% off all battle box meals. Okay. If you like what you see in battle box and you want to sign up with battle box, I have a, uh, a referral link where you can get, I think it's like a 10% off or $10 off or something off. Um, you know, when you sign up for your subscription. So you can find that link in the video description. I'm not saying you should sign up for battle box. I'm not saying you shouldn't. I'm saying if you were going to do it anyway, you can use that link help you out, help the channel out. Um, but let's see what we've got. Let me get everything out of the box and then we'll go through our, you know, our items. Real quick, if you don't know how BattleBox works, they've got four different levels. We, we're unboxing the Pro Plus here. Pro Plus is special, quotes, because it involves the knife of the month, which is why I buy this box. Um, so we start with the basic and, you know, each box builds on the ones before it. So the Pro Plus includes everything here plus the knife of the month and, you know, so on. All these values are MSRP values. You likely can and will find stuff for cheaper if you look for it. So when we see the, the value of the box, it's the MSRP value, you know, of what they're saying. So let's start with the basic box and move on down. Let's look for the hybrid light nav rechargeable headlamp and flashlight with an MSRP value of $33.95. And that is right here. Includes hat clip and adjustable headband. Um, we got some specs. We do got some specs. So we got five hours of light, three LED colors. That's cool. I turned it on somehow. So let's see what do we have. So we have the light itself, and I see how it. Oh, it's got a nice feel to it. It's got that soft touch feel. The lamp part rotates around. Um, a little switch here. I wonder if that switches the LED color. Let's see. lockout switch I guess that's like a lockout switch I don't know uh, we'll figure all this out in a minute of course as soon as I come out to do a video the skydiver starts to take off that plane was not flying all day and then here is the headband for if you want to use it headband style and then it maneuvers up and down all right your USB charging cable. All right, so I'm gonna disconnect this. So we turn it on, and then we hold it down. Now we've got our red light. Hold it down again. We've got our green light. And it really doesn't have any modes, but 
that's how we switch it from all the different lights, okay? Now, the price I feel is a little bit uh, extravagant, we'll say. I feel like this could be a cheaper item, but I feel like this is a good item to have. I like this. I like that it has the versatility of the clip versus the, uh, the headband, um, rechargeable. Now, you can't take the battery out, so, you know, charging is by the USB all the time. But cool, multicolor little thing, um, simple to use, good backup to have, or, you know, nice little easy camping device. So this will actually go and like it. And I, I will make good use of this, or the boys will, somebody will. So this will be the first item. That's cool. I love it when we can start out the first item out of the box and like it. Second item is the GoingGear.com, which, by the way, is owned by BattleBox. Uh, portable butane camp stove for $29.99. Uh, so, of course, I put it all the way on the bottom. I, this is the second kind of portable stove they gave us long time ago. A couple years ago, we got a, a portable camping stove from BattleBox. This is a very flimsy, it looks like a fancy plastic cover. It's a very flimsy plastic cover. And I opened it completely upside down. So there. I don't have butane to uh, connect it to right now. To, to you know, turn this thing on. Um, I got nothing. So we'll just look at the stove itself. Um, trying to get the plastic off of it. Because, you know, that's good to do. What I like about it, um, as opposed to the uh, propane stove that they gave us before, is um, it's very lightweight. That's for sure. So flip that around for cooking, but for storage and transport, it goes the other way to slim it down just a little bit. And, you know, for camping or even just, you know, emergency stuff. Um, and we actually had to use that, that butane stove, I'm sorry, the, the propane um, camp stove once in Florida. In Florida, we suffered every kind of, you know, hurricanes and everything else. So all the survival gear that we had got used, you know, once or twice, not all of it, most of it. So when we had power outages and stuff, and I have to, you know, have to try it out. I, I have no idea how it works, but... On the surface, uh, on the actual, like, you know, initial look, I like it. It's a cool thing. Um, I think it could work pretty well. So I think this is um, a useful item. I wish I could try it out right now, but I can't. But I'm going to put this one in like it just because uh, of the potential for using it. Um, and I, I will have to follow up with, you know, another video on it to see how it actually performs. What is next? Green Belly Meal to Go Meal Pouch. 645 calories for $7.25. Um, so this guy right here is one third of your total daily nutrition. So three of these a day. $21 to eat for the day. Um, I guess you guys want me to try it. Oh, it's just like one giant block. It's like a big old granola bar. Um, so let's see. Part of it away. Let's see. It's not bad. And it's also not good. It doesn't have a lot of taste at all. peanut apricot. Um, I could eat this. It's not bad. And that's the important part. It's harder to eat bad tasting things than bland tasting things. What I like about it is that it's just ready to eat. You don't have to prepare it or anything. Throw it in your pack um, and open it up and eat it. But again, you know, not the kind of stuff I like in BattleBox. Say it over and over and over. I'd rather have cool gear in BattleBox, not food. I'm gonna put this one in meh. If it was disgusting, it would go and don't like it. 
It's not bad though. And there's that 10% off code if you want more. It doesn't taste too bad. No, oh, man. That's everything in the basic box. Great. <sighs> Let's move to the advanced. So the advanced, of course, is everything here and the Aquapod emergency water storage kit for $39.95, and that's this thing. I'm not gonna be demonstrating this, I don't think. So what is this, you put this in your tub? This is literally, you put it in your tub and fill liner up with 65 gallons of water. Okay, I get it, I get where they're going. Yeah, I, I understand what they're, they always say in emergencies you should fill your bathtub with water. And so, um, again, you know, referencing five years in, in Hurricane Alley, um, we never actually did that because I thought it was kind of gross to have standing water. Um, you know, we, we stocked bottles of water, the big five gallon um, bottles of water. But this makes sense, actually. This is like real prepping type stuff, though, to know that there's an emergency coming. You know, you have warning, and you can put this in, in the bathtub instead of just filling a bathtub up and then scooping water out that's just standing open water to be able to fill your, you know, the tub with this. And then you have a, a sealed water source for whatever that I, this is not an exciting item, but I can tell that it's, it, I mean, it's, it makes sense. It's a smart item. It's a smart item. And then you've got a pump to get the water out slowly. Um, this is not something that I intuitively would have kind of thought of. I didn't even, you know, I wouldn't even think to search for it. I didn't know it kind of existed, but yeah, I, I get it. But, um, actually, that's a, that's a really smart idea to have for emergency stuff going on. It's the kind of thing that you probably, probably would actually, you know, hopefully never have to use. But if it did come down to it, you'd be so glad you had it. Um, now the question is, once you fill it up, can you, can you like, let's say you don't need to use it, <clears throat> can you drain it, put it away and use it again? Um, I don't know. This is true. Water stored in an open tub is not sanitary. So, believe it or not, I'm, I'm going to have to say that I, I actually like this item. I think, I just like I said, I think this is a really smart idea. Yeah. Okay. I like the Aquapod. It's the kind of thing where, it's the kind of thing where having it in, in the closet will just, it makes me feel better just knowing we have it, you know? What? All right, so we're moving into the Pro. Survival Suture Training Kit, $49.99. Oh, Jesus. All right, tested and approved by medical students. Well, yeah, because, you know, why have it tested and approved by doctors when you could have medical students? All right, let's try. So sutures, stitches, if you, if you didn't know. Um, is this all the same kind of... So here's a little quick primer on sutures. There's different stitches, different kinds of actual stitching material. Um, so, and they give you here, there's silk braided, and there's different sizes, the 3.0, 4.0, um, those are the different width and sizes, and there's different needles that attach to it. There's uh, round ones, there's triangular ones, there's, that's the, the indication of the size and shape of the needle attached to it. <clears throat> um, they give you a lot, well, I guess if you're practicing, um, now, so there's, you know, you'll, when you actually learn how to do suturing, like through a medical course, you get familiar with different things, monocryl, vicryl, monofilament, braided. Um, they, it's all, it's, I guess this is just a quick thing, but um, non-absorbable means you need to take them out. There are absorbable sutures that dissolve inside the body for internal. So a lot, with like serious injuries, you need to do internal sutures. Um, 
internal stitches and external, right? So you close up the damage inside and then the surface skin as well. Um, sometimes you need to actually cut, like in a very jagged wound, you'll need to cut away to give you two smooth surfaces to put back together. The smoother and, and, and more even the two uh, skin surfaces you can put back together, um, the less of a scar you're going to have and the easier time you have um, putting it together, the less chance of infection. Um, this is interesting because, oh look, the basics. Uh, I guess in an emergency, this could be a skill to have. Um, in some of my advanced medic courses, we used pig skin, like pieces of pig, because pig skin and tissue very accurately represents human stuff. Um, so this is like a neoprene or something, I guess. And then you can practice different techniques. There's different styles of suturing. I can't go over it all right now, but it's, you know, not a basic medic technique. It's once you've been in the medical world for a while, and I was, you know, back in the day, I had, I was a 91B, which is a, a combat medic, and you go through the different levels of that. I was also a 91C, which was an LPN, um, which brought me into more, more skills and, and stuff, and, um, this is, you know, this is great, but it it really does help when you have actual um, instruction on how to do it, not just following cards. Now, again, in a life-threatening situation, I, I guess you could do this. But the key thing is, if you're doing this dirty and you are not cleaning the wound properly, debriding the wound properly, if you're sewing foreign objects into the skin, you... you it's not just about closing the wound. There's a lot more that goes into suturing. Suturing is, yeah, the physical process of closing the wound. Um, there, there's, there's a lot more to it than that that goes on in actual medical care. So I have very mixed feelings about this. I just, I feel like you know, even when done properly in a hospital setting, you, you have to you have to check it. You have to know what you're looking for. There's the chance of something we call a nosocomial infection, which basically means an infection you get from the hospital setting. Which, I mean, if it can happen in a hospital, that that's the thing. That's what I, I was just talking about. It. You know, it's one thing to to fix a bleed, but if you're like in a survival situation and, and all of a sudden now you've got to deal with, you know. A crazy infection and and god forbid you get you know a, a resistant strain of an infection it, uh, there's no coming back from that i mean it's just anyway that's just oh i know this is a suture practice set but i know some people are going to take this and say i am now an, a master of suturing and i can go and apply this in the real world whenever i want um, so these are realistic tools though scalpel handle tissue forceps. Tissue forceps have these little teeth at the end so that you can grab pieces of skin and move them over. They're different from, from regular kinds of forceps. I lost a little rubber band, but it'll be okay. Just putting it back in here. Um, everything you actually like technically need to do suturing. Um, I prefer curved hemostats like this. I'd rather work with two sets of curved hemostats than the blunt ones, but that's just my personal technique. Um, but this is this is an, all you would need, really. Um, and they give you some scalpel blades. So if you're interested in learning, I mean, and just knowing the practice of it, this will do. Uh, there's different kinds of knots that you can tie, and this is an interesting collection of wounds. Now they're all the same thickness, um, which doesn't give you an opportunity to practice different thickness, you know, closures and stuff. Just throw that out there. But it, it's an interesting, I mean, it is an interest. I'm sorry I went off on a rant there. I just, I know everybody should learn some basic medical skills. Anyway, I get terrified of, of unqualified people doing medical procedures that they don't really understand or, or know about and causing damage. 
And that's one of the reasons I won't do, people keep saying like, why don't you do a trauma care video? And I'm like, because I don't want to be responsible for people hurting other people. Oh, they have detailed suture instructions and videos. Well, that's good. I'm just gonna throw this out there. If you are interested in dealing with a realistic patient type experience, get yourself an actual piece of pig with skin and everything. Um, cut it up and, and work on that, you know? I, I'll be honest though. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this in. I, I don't like it just because I don't, I don't like the potential of people feeling like they're qualified to do medical stuff and they're not. And, and you know, this is again, you know, I gotta go back to my days doing medical things. I have shown up, um, whether it's soldiers in the field or it's just you know on the ambulance, and you know you see somebody who who. You thought they knew what they were doing and they tried to do, you know, whatever medical care and you're like, how the hell did this person end up in this condition? And they're like, well, we really thought we could handle this ourselves. And you're, you're like, man, you just made my life as a medic 10 times harder. Cause now not only am I fighting against the injury or illness, but I'm fighting against what your dumb ass did. Um, I don't like the idea of of just handing this stuff over to people who don't know what they're doing. There's a reason it takes you a long time to be certified in medicine, uh, even emergency medicine. I, I mean, even in you know combat medicine, it's it's uh, we we have a phrase we call "see one, do one, teach one," but you know it's it's hands-on training. It's not just here's a box, learn. So I got to put this in. Don't like it. Um. Yeah. Okay, sorry, that was a little bit of a rant, but you guys know how I get about medical stuff. Even though I haven't been an actual medic in a long time. That's how I, you know. So, all right. And there's only one item left, moving into the Pro Plus. Um, and I don't think I'm gonna like it very much. But the knife of the month, the Topps Knives Mini Scandi Neck Knife, the current 1776 limited edition. First of all, just because it's a limited edition, you know, from their chosen video guy, does it doesn't do anything to me. Um, it's probably just got a separate color or something on it. But you get your top snob certificate. Um, I, I don't like neck knives. You guys, no, I, I just don't, I don't find a place for them in my my lineup. Really, I don't like them dangly from my neck. I didn't even like wearing dog tags when I had to. You think I'm gonna like wearing something this heavy? Um, but Topps knives are always good knives. So it says Curran 1776. Um, it does look like a very, I mean, a very nice grind. Their Topps knives are usually done really, really well. Um, but I just, I don't like neck knives. I don't like the size of neck knives. I don't, I don't like the dangliness of neck knives. I actually have nothing out here to, to try it out with. Um, I would rather have just a full size, good blade to work with. But of course, fit and finish is really nice. It's tops, um, standard powder coat. Um, kind of disappointed in this knife in the month though. You know, $100, I would, I would never pay $100 for this. Never, never ever. Uh, in fact, this knife of the month is going to go and don't like it. I just, it's not something I have use for. Um, I know there's a lot of people that would probably like this knife, but. So that's it, guys. Six items. Um, and, you know, it's it's not necessarily the quality of the items that I even am really so so thoroughly disappointed in. It's just that, like. This is not $150 worth of stuff as far as I'm concerned. Um, not at all. I'm willing to bet that we can find that knife without Curran 1776 lasered on it for much cheaper. Um, I think what's good is good. Great items. You know, I'd probably select a different kind of survival bar than that, but it's not terrible. And I've explained what I don't like, but I don't like it. Um, <sighs> 
So what do you guys think? Um, I, you know, I've always, I, I always try to keep an open mind when people tell me stuff like, you're not going to like it or you're going to be disappointed. I wonder why. Um, I, the items I like, I really like. The items I don't like, um, like, you know, that, that suture training kit is, is an okay training kit. It's just, I don't think it's something they should be handing out to people for various reasons. And that knife, you know, you remember when we got the little baby uh, Bastion $125 knife that big? I'm like, come on, give me a real knife I can work with uh, in the field. Not this. So, um, that's about that. So... Once again, if you do like what you see, though, and you want to try out Battle Locks, if, check out the video description for that referral code. Um, Battle Box used to be my number one absolute favorite monthly box. It's it's not anymore. Um, I'm not going to go out and say which is. There's, there's two boxes now that are competing for my favorite title. And I'll let you guys figure out which one it is, because I, I don't know which one it would be considered my favorite right now. Um, but... There's two boxes that I think just give you a better value. I'm going to stick with Battle Box just for tradition's sake, and I have another reason that I'm, I'm sticking with it. Um, and I'll tell you guys what that is. I, I'm hoping they come back. I'm hoping they come back to, to good, fully packed boxes. But this is... Can you imagine being a basic box subscriber? You get these three items, you know, and they're like, here you go. I mean... Battle Box really used to pack the boxes with great stuff. I guess they've just run out of ideas. I don't know. So, but anyway, love to hear your guys' thoughts on it um, and stuff. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get a, a butane can to put in here so we can test that out for real. We'll do a, like a field test like we did with the um, the the wood stoves, the survival stoves. Um, we'll we'll see how long it takes us to actually cook a meal and stuff and, and try it out. Until then, guys. Until the next video. You are all absolutely awesome. I appreciate every single one of you, and I will be back again real soon.